The videos that were put together by Claremont Mason University faculty, Dr. Vernon Hughes, Dr. Evans, and Dr. Jordan, were enlightening and a good starting point to re-examine the ideas of strategic communication that we have undertaken thus far in this course. One of the communication events that the facilitator, Dr. Hughes, centered on was this idea on how to conduct a town hall after issues of racism have been brought up. Look, so we know that strategic communication is not limited to channels that we communicate through. It is also inclusive of where and when conversations take place. But it's also just as important to analyze who is playing a part on being in the discussion table. One of the themes that we've discussed in this course is the need for diversity and inclusion when it comes to engaging in meaningful dialogue. Dr. Jordan made an explicit statement that we need to ask who the facilitators and the participants are in our typical conversations. Additionally, we must also inquire if the stakeholders are coming to the table with genuine concerns. This recalled my memory to a video that featured the Royal Canadian Mounted Patrol Deputy Commissioner, who seemed rather nonchalant in his denial of systematic racism within the Canadian policing system. One of the pitfalls of disingenuous communication, I mean, that is, which is not goal-driven, is that we end up looking at these difficult conversations as a chore, as opposed to an opportunity to foster change. One of the statements that Dr. Jordan made is that we need not rush the action. Think about that. This task of rushing the action eliminates our ability to be able to listen, hear, communicate, and receive messages. I would go as far as saying that when we rush the action in important conversations, this is how negations are fostered. Earlier in the course, we introduced the concept of negations, which we learned are used to um, communicate stereotyped, inconsistent information about others. This is something that we learned from Guggenbaum and others. One of the things that I wanted to focus on as it relates to having these difficult conversations is the notion of beginning with the end in mind. Dr. Vernon Hughes brought up an interesting concept which her colleagues discussed and we asked ourselves, what is the goal and the outcome of our communication? When we begin with the end in mind, this is how we can build collaboration, enhance equity as well, and we're becoming more mindful about our communication. Two of the authors that we encountered during this year were Sethi and Seth, who prescribed to us various ways that we can use interpersonal communication to become more mindful. Conversations that are dominated by intolerance, that is, sentiments, defensiveness, misinformation, must be countered by ensuring that the spaces are made up of diverse stakeholders who will prioritize everyone's thoughts while respecting the opinions of others. After watching the videos, one of the aspects that I wanted to change when it comes to how I engage uh, is how to facilitate conversations. In the age of infinite access to information, mostly from the internet, it is easy to refer someone to an article and tell them, hey, go read about this or go do about that. But as Dr. Evans put it, these are quick fixes that we've become attuned to. In looking back at the Hollins and Gavon discussion on the overriding impact of white dominant culture, I would argue that quick fixes are some of the ways that society has perpetuated white privilege or even other forms of privilege. One of the things that I will certainly employ after watching these videos is the need to ensure that I revisit how to facilitate dialogue. In my line of work, I've encountered scenarios where there are opportunities to start difficult conversations, but these scenarios are usually seen as an us versus them, where the other side is trying to overpower the other. I too have played into this pitfall of approaching these conversations with a need to convince the other side to join me rather than to listen to their perspective. One of the explicit statements that was made to counter this perspective is that we need to go somewhere that is not our usual space. We need to speak to people who do not have our common opinions, people who have different opinions from ours. In most discussion posts, I've brought up the idea of the effects of echo chambers and their impact on meaningful conversations. In reality, they do inhibit our ability to interact with others, especially when we go into unusual spaces. So in summary, if I'm facilitating a difficult conversation, I've learned that the principles and skills of strategic communication must be involved. As Burton and others wrote, mindful communication is that which is planful, effortfully processed, creative, strategic, flexible, and reason-based. To become more mindful communicators, we have to be aware of the factors that block effective communication from taking place. As Sethi and Seth wrote, these include complex language and controllable emotions, etc. Recently, I was part of a conversation that sought to change perspectives on 
having a 401k or having a pension. And this conversation was marked by people using complex language. And there's disagreement between seasoned employees and new employees that were recently hired. Neither side could come into an agreement on how to move forward. So this discourse was one that was not valued, that was one that did not value the expertise or opinions of others. What I think could have made this conversation more meaningful is if the table prioritized everyone's thoughts and agendas. And that's what strategic communication is about, or that is what meaningful strategic communication is about. Thank you.